Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I'm solo again today, and we are going to talk about comparison and how you can avoid comparison as well as the importance of avoiding comparison. Comparison can be a detriment to your business growth and your personal life. When you're consumed with what other people think of you, you can get stuck in a state of comparison and comparison will result in procrastination. And when you're in a state of procrastination, ultimately you're not taking the intentional effective action that you need to take to move forward, to grow either in business or life. And comparison is something that does affect us across both sectors, personal life and business. So take heart, listen, this is gonna be a really good episode. The question is, how can you avoid comparison and not allow what other people think to hold you back from growing your business? Or doing that big thing in your personal life that is a dream or a goal or something that you've just always wanted to achieve. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, stay in your own lane. The first time it really resonated with me was when I still had my photography business, but was moving into coaching. This was years ago, but despite the time lapse, the phrase and the person who said it had a tight grip on my mindset until somewhat recently. When was I overstepping or moving out of my lane of expertise? Absolutely not. I was coaching my branding photography clients on how to use images to grow their personal brands. I was helping them build their personal brands so that they could be more visible online, grow their businesses, and have more success. I wanted to teach them how to use the images that I had created for them. Not everyone one understood the value of the images created for building connection, trust, and relationships to convert their audience to clients, nor did they understand SEO and the power that images have for SEO. Never mind the nuances of sizing images and captioning them for social media. As a result, I decided to create a free ebook to help my branding clients and those in my community use images to their benefit to grow their businesses faster. I mentioned that what I was working on and to this person and this person took it to mean that I was trying to step into her niche. She thought I was stepping into social media management because I mentioned Instagram. Mind you, she was a content creator, a blogger and social media manager for types of clients that I really wasn't even working with. I was staying in my own lane working to help my clients and my community. The thought of doing what she was doing or taking clients from her never crossed my mind. Listen, I am a person of integrity and eth I'm ethical, I'm honest, and I believe in supporting each other. I don't believe that we hinder each other. I think we have opportunities to collaborate. And I believe that when we work together in collaboration, we all go farther, faster. I was on a mission to provide value and help people grow businesses while growing my email list. Here's the thing, staying in your own, own lane means not only doing what someone else is doing, but also not comparing yourself to others. Kind of like mind your own business, you know that phrase? Don't bother yourself with what other people are doing. Doing so can, can result in you feeling less than others not good enough, not capable of doing as well, and selling yourself short, holding yourself back. Most importantly, discern what other people say to you. Not everything they say is correct or in your best interest. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern what is best for you and what he wants for you versus what other people are saying is best for you. Now, I wasn't the only person accused of going outside my lane at this point in time. That should have been a red flag that, that I needed to, to let this incident roll off my shoulders and never think twice about it. But I'm a people pleaser. Raise your hands if you get that. I'm a people pleaser. And the thought of having someone upset with me or thinking I did something wrong was anxiety provoking. And it held me back. 
It held me back from sharing my expertise. I didn't put out that document. It held me back from putting my stake in the ground and claiming myself as an expert. Even though I'd taken classes and had certifications, it held me back from fully explaining and expressing what I do for my clients. As a result, I wasn't specific about how I help people grow businesses for long-term success. Because what someone else thinks shouldn't keep you from helping those who need you. But I let that happen. Bottom line, I was afraid of the person and I let her hold me back. I don't tell you this story to say anything about bad about the person. Maybe she had trust issues and needed to work through some things herself. But I want to point out that if fear or comparison is holding you back, it's time to act. It's time to step into your purpose, your calling, and not let them hold you back any longer. Make the decision to move forward and put your stake in the ground as the expert that you are. There are so many things that can hold you back. Don't let comparison, doubt, or other people be the culprits. You can control your thoughts and the action that you take. The fact is, I have no ill feelings towards this person. I believe we experience things in life, hard things, so that we can learn and grow and then help other people through our experiences. And that's why I want to share this with you, because it emphasizes the way fear and comparison can hold you back. There's so much to consider if you feel held back, but you want to start to avoid comparison. Because you're growing a business in the online space, you are bound to find yourself comparing yourself or up against a wall with someone else comparing themselves to you, copying you, or comparing yourself to others. This is another reason I talk so much about discovering your core values and adhering to them. When you align with your values, you won't fall into the trap of letting someone else hold you back or from comparing yourself to others. You will believe in your purpose and the value of the work you are doing. Here's the thing about the online space, especially social media. If you're consuming content and following people in your own or a similar niche, you will end up comparing yourself in good and bad ways. There are a few problems with comparison. Let's summarize them real quick. When you compare yourself and then start doing or saying things that someone else does or says, you lose your authenticity. When you lose your authenticity, you won't stand out. And you may fall into the sameness pool and your soulmate clients won't recognize why they should hire you. The comparison may hold you back and you'll procrastinate or stay stuck, like I said at the beginning. You may lack belief or have an increase in doubt and fear because you see something else or someone else doing what you do or appearing to be successful and you want what they have. You want their level of success. Remember, there are billions of people in the world and enough work to go around, especially when focusing on your unique gifts and abilities and staying aligned with your values and your purpose. The opposite can also happen. You may see yourself as better and become prideful, which is never a good thing. It is always better to be humble first, because the Bible says so, and we're supposed to do everything for the glory of Christ, not for the glory of ourselves. Secondly, you are more apt to make mistakes and be inauthentic if you're being prideful. Romans 12, three tells us, don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God gave us. This was an eye opener for me, this verse. So the fifth thing that comparison can result in is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome and comparison kind of go hand in hand because imposter syndrome also leads to comparison. If you feel imposter syndrome, focus on Ephesians 2.10. 
For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In other words, you are a masterpiece with unique gifts and a purpose. Don't let comparison or imposter syndrome or the world distract you from being who you are called to be. Let God lead you and give you the strength and wisdom you need. If you feel you lack any of these things, ask him for them. He has a plan for you and he will equip you. I love the phrase, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. It's such a good thing to remember. There's always a resource when you believe. When you do anything in your business or life, I'm going to suggest that you evaluate it. But do so from a place of humility. Take time to really evaluate, not an on the surface type of evaluation of, oh yeah, that went well, I did great. But look at the entire picture, including from the perspective of whether it was aligned with your values, your calling, and what God wants from you and the other person or situation. Ask yourself these three questions, what worked, what didn't work? And what can and will you do differently next time? When you take the time to evaluate, you will be able to focus on your efforts and not outside distractions. It will help you avoid comparison and imposter syndrome and help you grow faster. It brings the focus inward on to you, your business, your growth intentions, and really on your calling so that you're not distracted. You're focusing on how you can take action to improve. Not everything's going to go your way. There are going to be times when you, you're told, no, someone doesn't hire you, even though you were hopeful and you believed that you were the best person for them. They may still have a hang up with money or confidence or who knows what, that they don't invest in you. And that's why it's important to do this evaluation so you can really see, okay, you know what? Maybe if I said this differently, it would have changed the situation. But when you do these evaluations, I promise you, you'll start to see more growth. You'll just recognize more about yourself and it'll take away some of that pressure of what other people are doing because now you know you're taking the right steps in the right action to get to the right place, the next right step you need to take to grow your business or whatever that is you're working on in your personal life. Whether someone is accusing you of copying them or you are comparing yourself to others, remember, you are unique. You're a masterpiece. Your unique qualities and gifts are meant to be used to serve other people. I have to remind myself of this too, so that I would continue to provide value despite the fear of the person making an, another accusation of me. It's difficult, but we need to put on the armor of Christ and be strong to avoid letting others hold us back so that we can answer our calling and fulfill our purpose. The fact is there are people out there just waiting for us to help them, <clears throat> excuse me, and serve them. And if fear is holding us back, we aren't pursuing that. To move past the fear, it is important for me to, to first pray and second, to recognize that I am unique and that I'm not your typical business coach. I'm a strategic. I am strategic. I am creative and I have developed a method, the purpose to results method for growing businesses without relying on social media. That includes blogging and SEO, but those are just a few of the components of my program. Most importantly, my brain is what makes the program so awesome. Not bragging here at all. This certainly is not a brag. This is sharing God's gift to me a brain that functions equally on the left and right sides. So you have the strategy and analytic part and you have the creative part, which is so super cool. And I'm so super blessed. My clients get my ideas and my eyes on everything they do. They never have to struggle or feel alone on the journey to grow their businesses. What I do is not like anything else in anything that anybody else does because of this fact that my brain works in both ways. I do what I do using my unique gifts and I approach business coaching differently. It's one stop coaching, everything under one umbrella, mindset, strategy, and accountability, creativity. It's 
all together. What makes you unique? To help avoid comparison, I encourage you to take time to write a list of all the ways that you are unique. How you do things differently than everybody else in your area of expertise. The more you differentiate yourself, and there's going to be a lot of links in this blog post because there's a lot of uh, previous episodes that we did on some of these topics, including comparison, um, differentiation, um, and different other different topics that I've touched on today. So be sure you go over to the show notes because you'll want to read like more details on how to differentiate yourself, but this is a good start. The more you differentiate yourself, the less you will compare yourself because you'll become more confident in your unique abilities and journey and your journey that to garner your expertise, right? Every step of the way you have learned, you have grown, you may have made mistakes and you may feel like you're failing your way forward, which isn't necessary because you can hire help. But if you feel that way, every single part of your journey has led you to, or granted you, given you the expertise that you now have because you learned. You will see how God has set you apart and only you can do the work that you're doing in the way that you do it to help the people that are your best clients, your soulmate clients that God is calling you to serve. This exercise will also help you further define your personal brand and clarify your message. Your personal brand is part of your business foundation and more clarity on what differentiates you will help you make your brand marketing efforts a whole lot easier. If you struggle with this exercise and feel stuck, it may be time to hire a coach for an additional perspective. Sometimes we get stuck in our own mind and we can't see outside of what we're already thinking. And sometimes it's simply a mindset block that's holding us back, but it's really hard to recognize that when you're going through it. So if you're struggling to differentiate yourself, if you're struggling with identifying your purpose, it may be time to hire someone to help you, to guide you or a mentor. You are worth the investment and it could be the difference between fulfilling your purpose with simplicity, ease and grace and giving up. We don't want you to give up. Not now, not ever. You're too important. And the world needs your gifts. To avoid comparison, realize that most likely your ideas aren't new, nor are my ideas new. Your approach to them may be new and unique. However, the concept is probably already in existence. It's possible you are the first person to state the concept or idea in the way you're saying it, because we do all have unique perspectives. We do all have a unique viewpoint on the world and life, et cetera, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's brilliant, right? To say something unique. But the reality is many of us do the same or at least very similar things. And everything is open to interpretation and new approaches because we all have those unique, miraculous brains and ways of seeing things. Everything we do is subject to interpretation, just like in the example above. My way of helping my clients was misinterpreted as trying to move into another niche. Obviously, that was not my intent. If you are working from a place of integrity and alignment with your values, you can confidently continue your journey without letting anyone else get a grasp on your mindset, even when they're trying to hold you back. Here's the thing. Like in the example I gave, if she'd believe in herself, if she had believed in herself and her business and her unique abilities to help her best clients and not compared what I was doing and my success, our relationship wouldn't have been strained. She would have been content and I wouldn't have been afraid and held back because of upsetting her. This is what comparison done does. It breaks you down. So to avoid comparison, remember that God placed a unique calling on your heart and gave you unique gifts to use to serve your soulmate clients. Your soulmate clients are unique to you. God has given you gifts to serve them and solve the problems that they have, that they need to be solved, that only you can do the way you do it. Like I said before, if someone tries to hold you back, remember God has called you and people need you. 
there's a reason for you to move forward and not stop working towards your goals. There's no need whatsoever to compare yourself to others, but you're human and it's going to happen. It happens to all of us. It definitely happens to me. It's something that I am genuinely working on and I'm trying so hard not to strive for that earthly success, earthly recognition and focus on living for the glory of Christ. But it's really hard because we're human and we have so many distractions and so many things pull us in different directions. But when that does happen, reflect on Galatians 6, 4. And I mentioned this in last week's episode too. It's just such a great verse. And I think it really helps to keep us grounded. But Jodi Burnt, um, she's an author. She's she's amazing. And I will link her book in the show notes. Um, her book is Praying the Scriptures for Your Life. But here's how she phrases this verse as a prayer. Heavenly Father, equip me to pay careful attention to my own work and get the satisfaction of a job well done so I won't need to compare myself to anyone else. Faith plays a big role in trusting God to lead you and equip you without falling into the comparison of yourself and others. Here's a few additional prayers that I want to share with you that Jody has in her book. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gifts you have given me. When I feel like my contribution is weak or unnecessary, remind me that my gifts are indispensable in your eyes and that you give special honor to things that seem less valuable so there won't be any division among your people. And another one, don't let me harbor envy or selfish ambition in my heart since that is not from you and it leads to disorder and every evil practice. That's from James 3, 14 to 16. And my favorite, Heavenly Father, show me how to go ahead and be what I was made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing myself to others or trying to be something I am not. And that's from Romans 12, 6. Again, these verses are all in the show notes, you guys, so you can go over and check them out. And then write them down or save them for later so that you can always refer back to them. One thing that you can do to avoid comparison is to embrace contentment. Count your blessings and practice gratitude every single day. The more you focus on your blessings, the more content you will feel. It's work. And if you're prone to comparison, it may be hard work. But it is key to alleviating comparison and finding joy as you grow your business. Jody shares a prayer about contentment as well. Heavenly Father, show me how to be content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or in want. And that's from Philippians 4.12. And another one, don't let me focus on trying to win the approval of people, but of you. If I were trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. And that's Galatians 1.10. One more related to comparison and contentment is this. Heavenly Father, instead of looking around to what others are doing or what their lives look like, may I always stay focused on following you. And that's John 21, 22. Likewise, here's a quote by Gary Zimak, author of Stop Worrying and Start Living, that I think will inspire you to learn to lean more into your faith instead of letting others and what other people think and comparison distract you. In order to be peaceful, however, we need to come up with a way to constantly live in the presence of God. I hope you guys found this helpful. I know this is something that I am working on daily to stop striving for all of this earthly, uh, you know, um, notoriety, so to speak, and focusing more on living my life for Christ, but really looking at him to guide me to go in the right direction, to take the right action, and to not let what other people say influence me as much. It's probably always going to happen, but I'm trying really hard to discern more frequently. So I hope this helps you do the same. If you'd like a free resource about 
how you can build your business or grow your business without relying on social media. There's a link in the show notes to the 10 strategies to start and grow your business without relying on social media ebook. I think you'll find it very helpful and in enlightening that you don't have to be on social media until later when you want to build relationships, maybe grow opportunities for collaborations and referral sources, but you don't have to be on social media to start to build the foundation of your business. And then I'm also going to link in the show notes, praying for scriptures, praying the scriptures for your life by Jody Burnt. So that if you are interested in buying that book, which I highly recommend, she has multiple of them. She has um, for, you know, praying the scriptures for your children, for your adult children, for your teens, and then praying the scriptures for your life. She's got several of them out on the market, but she is incredible and so inspiring. All right. With that being said, I'm going to close out for this episode, but I will see you right back here next week with another great episode and more valuable content to help you grow your business with simplicity, ease, and grace. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next week.